Hello, hi, welcome to another video. Today we are going to discuss about the various parameters associated with the transformer. In order to explain the various parameters, I will make use of the nameplate of a transformer. This is the enlarged view of the nameplate and there you can see it is written as trite type transformer. Now let's see in detail what is a trite type transformer and what are the different classifications of transformer. The transformers are basically classified into two based on the medium of cooling used for the windings. These cooling mediums protect the transformer from getting heated up and it prevents from potential hazards. Based on this cooling method, transformers are classified into two. They are oil type transformers and dry type transformers. Coming to dry type transformers, air is used as a medium of cooling in this type of transformers. These are the safer option of transformers and we will be seeing them in most of the public places like a company or a building. Coming to the next one, oil type transformers. In oil type transformers, oil is used as a medium of cooling. Even though they serve the same purpose, they have got the major differences in them. These differences are important enough that a certain type transformer are better for certain conditions. Next parameter is the KV rating of the transformer. We have already discussed how to select the KV rating of a transformer in our last video. For those who haven't watched the video, I have given the link of that video in the description box. Coming to our example, it can be seen that the rated capacity is 1000 kVA which means 1 MVA. Now let's see the voltage details of this transformer. Here the rated voltages are 11 kV on the HT side and 433 volt on the LT side. Coming to the rated current of the transformer, you can see the rated current on the HT side is 52.48 ampere and that on the LT side is 133.46 ampere. Now let's see how this can be calculated. Rated current on the HT side is given by the formula kVA into 1000 divided by root 3 into voltage that is same as 1000 into 1000 divided by 1.732 into 11000 which will be giving the value of 52.48 and that on the LT side by applying the same formula 1000 into 1000 divided by root 3 into 433 which will be giving the value of 133.46 now we are again coming back to the nameplate details as you can see here now we are going to see the winding details the HT windings are connected in delta and the LT windings are connected in star and also you can see both the windings are in three phase. Now the next question will be why the HT winding is connected in delta and why the LT winding is in star. Now let's answer that question. The delta windings on the HT side of the transformer will allow the third harmonic current to circulate within the transformer and it will prevent the harmonic from going out into the system. And also, the HT supply will be running on a 3 phase 11 kV system with no neutral or earth point. So, star point in the star connection won't be required. Coming to the secondary, as you know, the secondary is found in star. It will be giving an output voltage of 433 volt between the lines and a domestic supply voltage of 240 volt between the line and neutral. It can also be seen that there is a phase shift of 30 degree between the primary and secondary voltages. Now again coming back to the nameplate, we can see that the serial number and the month and year of manufacture are also imprinted on the nameplate of the transformer. Coming to the next parameter, the next parameter is the class of insulation of the transformer. In this case, the class of insulation is class F, which means that the average winding temperature will be 115 degrees Celsius. As you can see here, this is the table showing the different classes of insulation. There are classes like class A, B, F, N and H and which will be having a winding temperature varying from 65 to 180 degrees Celsius. Next is the material used for HT and LT windings. The material used here are copper, specifically electrolytic copper. The next parameter is the impedance voltage. There are two options. One is the standard value and another one which will be printed once after the testing of the transformer. Now let's see what is impedance voltage. Impedance voltage is the voltage required to circulate the rated current under the short circuit condition of secondary with a stamp connected to the rated voltage and this is used to calculate the percentage impedance of the transformer. Coming back to the nameplate again, you can see the next parameter is the vector group. You can see here the vector group is DYN11. Now let's see it in detail. D in the DYN11 shows that delta connected primary and Y shows star connection in the secondary. N shows that star point is taken out as neutral. And also 11 shows that there is a phase shift of 30 degree leading between the primary and secondary voltages. What you are seeing now is the possible vector group options with different combinations of primary and secondary windings and associated phase shift. 
Now, the next question will be, what is the significance of this vector group? We can answer that too. It is a method of categorizing the HV and the LV windings in a transformer. This indicates the winding configuration and the phase angle between them. Different combination of winding connections will be having different phase angle between voltages on the winding. Due to this reason, when we are connecting two transformers in parallel, transformers with same vector group only should be parallel. If you are paralleling two transformers of different vector group, the mismatch in the phase angles will end up in the circulating currents and other system disturbances. Now we want to check the next parameter and going to that, it is the insulation level. It is being written as Li75 AC28 bar AC3. Now let's see each in detail. Li75 means the HV winding lighting impulse with stand voltage is 75 kV. Impulse tests are normally performed on transformers to check for the insulation levels. I'll be sharing the videos of an impulse test very shortly. AC28 bar AC3 means the continuous withstanding capacity of a transformer for a high voltage of 28 kV and 3 kV on HT and LT side respectively for a continuous duration of 60 seconds. Next is the specifications. This shows the compliance of the transformer with respect to IS2026 and IS11171. These are the guidelines governing the constructional features, testing and tolerance limits of the transformer. Also, it can be seen that the maximum rise in the winding temperature will be 90 degrees Celsius at an ambient temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. It is also noted that the weight of the transformer is 3800 kg. Next is OLTC. OLTC means on load torque changer. OLTC is capable of switching the top position so as to provide the voltage regulation while carrying the load. This OLTC have 17 taps ranging from plus 5 percentage to minus 15 percentage in steps of 1.25 percentage. Tappings are taken from the middle of the delta winding. I will be doing a separate video on OLTC, its operation and general arrangement. Last parameter related to transformer is CT. Two CTs are provided in transformer. First one is RFCT. This is used to provide the sonal protection for the transformer. The parameters of the RFCT are given as 1600 bar 5 amps PS class 15 VA. Knee voltage equal 400 volt and magnetization current at knee voltage by 2 will be 30 MA. Also, resistance of the CT secondary winding will be 2.04 ohms. Now we will just go through this knee voltage and the magnetization current of the CT. Normally these parameters are mentioned where the CT is used for the protection purpose. PS means protection special. The parameters of the CT will be represented by knee voltage and the magnetization current at knee voltage by 2. Knee voltage is defined as the voltage at which 10 percentage increase in the secondary voltage would result in 50 percentage increase in secondary current. Next CT is the neutral CT which is 300 bar 5 ohms 5 feet 10 and this CT will be rated for 20 percentage of the rated secondary current. This was all about the nameplate details of a transformer. In the next video, I will be detailing about the materials and the components used in a transformer along with the losses in a transformer. Hope the video was informative. If you like the video, please like and subscribe my channel for more informative videos. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you.